Hai semuanya, ini Lucina dari Lucilin. Um, aku um, akan bikin video-video dalam bertopik wedding dan wedding planning, um, memperbedakan wedding dan wedding planning di Amerika versus di Indonesia. Nah, sebagai video pertama di series itu, um, aku mau ngomongin soal proses wedding proposal atau lamaran di Amerika versus di Indonesia. Um, dan untuk video ini aku akan mengundang tunangan aku um, dan karena tunangan aku bukan orang Indonesia dan dia nggak bisa ngomong bahasa Indonesia dan dia nggak ngerti bahasa Indonesia juga um, video ini akan pakai bahasa Inggris jadi untuk kalian yang perlu subtitle bahasa Indonesia jangan lupa klik subtitle Oke, okay, so this is my fiance and I've asked him today to guest star in this video because we want to talk about wedding proposal process in Indonesia versus in the US and he might what's the word debunk debunk some of the myths about US wedding proposals um, and he's also more familiar with the US version since he okay since he was four years old so he's basically American nice Americanized uh, so Indonesian how Indonesians do proposal so the guy and the girl talk about it and then um, they plan a day where the guy and the guy's parents uh, come over to the girl's parents house and ask for her hand in marriage basically ask for permission and you know and the, and the girl's parents are usually already expect this because the girl usually tells their parents and then after the girl's parents accept that uh, after they give that permission then there's a, f a more formal event with like formal clothing where again the guy and the guy's family usually the parents some and the siblings sometimes and sometimes even like the relatives like the cousins and the aunts and the uncles um they come over again to the girl's parents house and again again the girls the girl's family already expects this too so they're already dressed and so in this event the guy's family usually brings gifts for the girl's family and the gifts are usually gold so like jewelry and like basically like you know stuff like that like valuables um and then the girl's family would give the guy and his family food so like fruits i think traditional is like fruits but i think recently it's more like food i think engagement rings um i think usually indonesian couple don't do engagement rings they just do the wedding rings you know on the day of the wedding um but usually or well, sometimes during this proposal process the guy would the guy or the guy's family would give the girl um like a necklace or a bracelet like i said like they bring jewelries to the girl's parents house so that's how it works in indonesia like, in the u.s like in the movies usually they show the proposal as like the guy proposing to the girl and the girl saying yes and then they tell the parents and like it makes it look like there's like the guy don't doesn't have to ask for permission from the girl's parents first so is that how true is that um i don't think it's as true as as uh, as it, they show it in the movies um oftentimes the guy does actually ask the girls parents for their for their blessing is what it's mm -hmm. called they um they visit the girl's family or call them ahead of time and say that they would like to marry their daughter and uh if that would be okay and then that usually results in um a conversation they talk about you know their plans together they talk about what marriage means to them and then the guy would you know uh uh, do the proposal and then after that then they call their parents but then the proposal doesn't happen like right then and there right the proposal no. could happen like sometime later it can, it can happen sometime later yeah. so that's where like the surprise comes in like the girl mm -hmm. like the girl expects the proposal gonna happen because he's already talked to the parents and the parents yeah. already get permission but then he just she the girl just doesn't know like when the proposal is yeah. gonna happen uh, oftentimes the couple themselves have talked about it already there's no surprise in terms of the fact that they're going to get married, mm -hmm. but there is a surprise in terms of what the circumstances will be or when it will happen. And so, like, when so is it required? So in Indonesia, it's required for the guy's parents to come to the girls to the girl's parents' um, residence because otherwise, you know, it's considered disrespectful if the other guy's parents don't come. In the U.S., like, is there like that requirement or? Uh, I, I don't think so. I think um, it depends on the families themselves because in the U.S., 
there are a lot more different cultures that are living here and that are residents here than there are in other places. So mm -hmm. um, I think you really just have to feel out, you know, the, the culture of both families to see what works. Um, but that being said, I think in typical or, or um, common American culture, it's not really required. Okay. Um, as long as they make the effort to call, usually, you know, very traditional people visit. Um, but, you know, you can visit or you can call. We did it that way where he went to my parents' um, house and asked, for, and asked for my hand in marriage and they talked about, you know, what he said they talked about. And then, but his parents didn't come, um, which is again, like he said, it's not required. How about like family meeting family? Because in our case, you know, our families met. After, so after you went to my parents and then my parents went over to California to meet your parents. Um, because his parents can't travel, so um, yes, yeah, so and in, in the U.S., like, is that a requirement for like parents to meet parents before proposal or even before the wedding? I think it's preferred, but it's not a requirement. Um, off, I, I have friends who are American um, whose parents didn't meet until the day of the wedding. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, that's that is also not that common. I think what's uh, usually pretty common is that they meet sometime before they get engaged. At mm -hmm. least they meet after they get engaged, but before they get married. Okay. Those are the most common things, but I don't think they're required. Okay. Um, but it is, you know, I think it's preferred just so that you guys, they, they meet each other beforehand. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> how about, inter how about the engagement ring? Cause here we use like, like what 95% of the case there is an engagement ring and, and the, the myth is what I, that I've always heard is that an engagement ring ne needs to be worth two, three months of the guy's salary. So how true is that? That is almost completely a myth. Um, I think you should spend what you feel comfortable spending. Two, th two months, three months of your salary is a lot of money. I think you should spend what you feel comfortable spending. Um, you know, just know that it's an object and not, you know, uh, it, it, it's not... Mm. It's a symbol. Yeah, yeah. Just know that it's a symbol. Some people like to spend a lot of money on uh, their engagement ring. Like, you know, tens and tens and tens of thousands of dollars. I've seen engagement rings that are over $100,000. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's just a lot of money. I think that you should spend as much as you feel comfortable spending. Um, and don't, like, don't buy anything that will put you in debt. Just make sure that you can afford it. Um, you shouldn't have to go bankrupt to buy an engagement ring. Yeah, but at the same time, it should also be something that the girl likes, right? Mm -hmm. And that's another topic, I think. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about what my engagement ring, mm -hmm. what I wanted my engagement ring to look like. Mm -hmm. And I like I did set some guidelines in terms of like, oh, I want it like, I'd rather have it mm -hmm. brighter than bigger. Mm -hmm. I don't want it to be big but yellow. Mm -hmm. I'd rather that it's white but like not as big. Mm -hmm. How often do couples do that? Because I, because like the stereotype is that the guy would buy the ring and then you know like not like asking asking the girl's sister or the girl's best friend or something for opinion on what she would like instead of just asking her directly and then like what if she doesn't like it when he already got it for her. This one's definitely up in the air. There are a lot of different people who do different things. Mm -hmm. Some people um, don't um, don't ask for any opinion. So they just buy it by themselves without mm -hmm. asking for any opinion. They pick what they like. Mm -hmm. Some people go the opposite extreme where they just go to the store together and the girl picks what she likes mm -hmm. and, at the store. Mm -hmm. And then um, some people do things that are in the between. So I, mm -hmm. I kind of did it in between where I asked her if there's anything she would hate. Mm -hmm. um, some people... Um, you know, keep it mostly a secret, but then ask, you know, siblings or parents or something what they would like. Mm. So I, I think the important thing, the reason I did it my way is because I wanted it to be a little bit of a surprise, but also I knew that I'm not going to be the one wearing it. So she needs to like it, um, or at least she needs to not hate it. Mm -hmm. But um, at the same time, I know that, you know, I want to put an effort to think about what she might like and what I think might, be, might look good as well. Mm -hmm. So that's how I sort of chose how much mm -hmm. to involve her in the process. Mm -hmm. I do have a story. We, I did have a friend, right? who I guess the guy didn't ask her what she wanted exactly or I don't know what happened but she ended up not liking the ring when he got it for her and she um, asked him, She they, they basically sent it back and revised it hmm. once and then twice 
And then once she saw my engagement ring, because we got engaged around the same time, once she saw my engagement ring, she thought about revising it again a third time. Mm -hmm. And all of that costs money, by the way. So like, if you want to mm -hmm. revise your engagement ring, mm -hmm. so yeah, I think that if you don't, if the girl, does, I think that the girl should like whatever the guy gets her because it's the thought that counts. Of course, it'd be nice if it's big or or shiny but it's the thought that counts more. Mm -hmm. And also just consider how much the guy makes and you know, don't be materialistic and don't expect him to spend like two or three months worth of his salary for the ring. Yeah, that's a lot of money. Yeah, two, that's a lot of, of money, yeah. And another proposal story, I'm gonna let him tell, tell you our proposal story because I think he tells it better um than i do so I'm we were living in san francisco at the time and there is a place uh about half an hour drive from san francisco it's called half moon bay this is um near the ocean in between san francisco and san jose um i asked if she wanted to get away for one weekend um in a couple of months and she said sure there's this place in half moon bay called the ritz carlton it's a hotel but the thing that's really beautiful about it is that it has a really nice restaurant in the back that you don't have to be at the hotel for um in order to go to um so i thought we'd do a nice little day trip it's only half an hour away from san francisco um so we drove down there went to um the restaurant which is in the back of the hotel facing the ocean and if you're not familiar with Half Moon Bay, it's, you know, it's a cliff and then it goes right into the water. So it's a really beautiful view of the ocean. Um, we went out there uh, and we just had a little bit of lunch. And then I thought, okay, well, why don't we um, walk over to the cliff and just look around and have a nice view? And she said, sure. As we were walking out, um, she started to get really cold. Um, I was thinking, okay, like, I really want to propose at this point because it's such a beautiful view, um, but she's really cold, so okay, let me be, do something romantic. Let me take off my jacket and put it on her. So I took off my jacket, put it on, and that's when I realized, oh no, the ring is inside the jacket that I just put on her. Um, so I wouldn't be able to propose because in America, you um, get on your knee, as you see in the movies, you get on your knee with the ring and then uh, ask for her to marry you, and I, I wouldn't be able to do that because the ring was in the jacket. Mm -hmm. So we just walked back to the restaurant and uh, we had a little bit more food. We had some snacks like in the middle of the day. And we started hearing this drumming sound. And then this, uh, this guy turns the corner of the, of the view. And all of a sudden you see some horses and a, like a, a lot of people walking in a line and more instruments and more drums and then people dancing. And then she goes, oh, it's an Indian wedding. <laughs> and I was thinking, oh, great, it's an Indian <laughs> wedding. I, I feel like a, I feel really <laughs> awkward proposing right behind an Indian wedding. So now we have to wait for this wedding to finish. Um, and then uh, everybody sits down. The restaurant is behind this courtyard and the courtyard is where the wedding was happening. Um, so it was a very pretty wedding, you know, a lot of uh, very emotional, um, emotional speeches. And then she starts crying <laughs> and says that she loves weddings in general. After the Indian wedding finished, I said to her, okay, hey, let's go back out to that cliff. <laughs> and then she, she goes, why? We were just out there. <laughs> then I was like, well, let's just, let's just go. <laughs> So we went back out, we went to the same spot, overlooked the ocean, I gave a speech, and then I got down on my knee with the ring, and then she immediately burst into tears. And then um, there was a, um, a couple behind us, an older couple, and the wife of that older couple started crying too. Behind us, there was a photographer, um, and he took some photos of us as well. And I thought the photographer was hired by him, so I thought the photographer was part of the plan. No, it wasn't. Um, it happened to be there, he was yeah. a guest at the hotel. Yeah. Luckily, he emailed the pictures to me later that evening, so that was nice. Yeah. Um, and then that was it. That's a proposal story. So it was a waterfront um, wedding proposal, right after an Indian wedding, before another wedding. It was before another wedding. Before another mm -hmm. wedding, it was, I think the second wedding was a Chinese. No, no, it was an Asian American wedding. Um, and it was a beautiful hotel, it was a beautiful waterfront. And uh, that's it for my video today. This 
Uh, everything we talk about today is just based on our general experience. Uh, obviously, there are exceptions. Not every single uh, proposal went this way or that way in the U.S. and in the in Indonesia. So yeah. So if you like this kind of video, gives it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and turn on your notifications so that whenever I publish a video, you get the first updates. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Like I said in the intro, this is the first video in my we don't uh, we don't <laughs> <laughs> in my we don't series, my we don't stories. <laughs> All planned and it's pretty formal. So the guy and the guy, the guy and the guy. <laughs> it, intro the engagement part. Okay. Um. <laughs> <laughs>